Have you thought about what you would like to do when you leave school? Have you made plans for a job or do you already know what career you want? Well, there are many different jobs and careers that you can choose from in Wales. And these tend to be grouped into five main sectors. Engineering, construction, health, hospitality and lifestyle, IT and business, creative and digital. So how do you get your dream job? Well, you will usually have to make career choices during your time in school. This can mean staying on and taking A-levels, or you could choose vocational education and training. Vocational education and training are programmes and courses that focus on the skills required for a particular job or trade. It can cover a wide variety of routes, including further education, traineeships and apprenticeships. It can also be an opportunity to learn while you earn. So let's find out a little more about each of these sectors. The engineering and technology sector employs a large proportion of the workforce across Wales, especially in North Wales, where there is a large and thriving aerospace sector, as well as many career opportunities in advanced materials manufacturing and the nuclear energy industry. So what type of skills do you need to work in this sector? Well, engineering requires a high level of problem solving, logical thinking and analysis. And the demand for these type of skills is growing and will continue to grow. So you'll need to make sure that you have a good grasp on the STEM subjects. That's science, technology, engineering and maths. But digital and automation skills are also super handy. There are lots of different job roles, but some of the key areas for employment in this sector across Wales are listed here. Whoa. Wow. So, what can you earn, I hear you ask? Well, potential earnings varies across the sector. For example, engineering technicians can earn £33,000 a year and civil engineers £44,000 a year. OK, now that you know a little more about the engineering and technology sector, let's hear from Gethin Johnson, who decided that a job in engineering with agriculture was the career choice for him. My name is Gethin Johnson. I'm an agricultural engineer and lecturer here at the Getty Air Campus. I also have another role that I do, which is a skills ambassador for World Skills UK and the Welsh team. We go back into schools and in different events across the UK to promote uh, vocational skills and to also promote people to come into the industry that we actually uh, are in. I uh, purchased my first arc welding set when I was at the, the young age of 15. I would pretty much weld anything and everything that moved. I started making little pieces of art and um, animals and sculptures. So I got into the industry through um, going to college and also doing an apprenticeship in welding and fabrication, uh, which was a three year apprenticeship and gave me the foundations and to build on to where I am at today. I decided to do a vocational course um, as university wouldn't be for me. Um, I was more of a earn money learn kind of guy. And so the apprenticeship route really did suit me and it was um, my, my best option. So I'm now a lecturer because I was at the pinnacle of my career uh, being a competitor and I've learned you know, the best from the best pretty much. So now I'm back here now to pass on my knowledge, hopefully to the future generation to have their best opportunity. So if I was a young uh, student unsure on a career path to take, the one piece of advice I would advise you to is to, uh, persistence, to keep at it. Um, you may not find the first path that you want to pursue, but at the end of the day, keep at it and you will find something in the end. Qualification is very important, so when you go for a job in the, in the future, the, the knowledge will be good, but the qualification is, is as important. So I've recently uh, completed my PGC, which enables me to deliver to the best of ability here as a college lecturer. Regardless of what age you are, and whether you're still in full-time employment or not, I'm still achieving qualifications. Thinking of a career in construction? Well, the construction sector employs a large proportion of the workforce across Wales. The sector is thriving in all regions. Just think how many builders, plumbers, carpenters you may already know. However, those are not the only jobs in construction, as the actual list of careers in this sector is huge. In terms of skills, well, we can categorise these again as being in the areas of STEM and there is a real concern that there will soon be a skills shortage, so best get training. 
Remember, as well as those that we think of as traditional construction jobs, uh, there are other more office-based jobs such as administration, project management, procurement, legal and finance, as well as surveying, marketing, education, community engagement, and so on. Too many for me to list here. So the question I know you're dying to ask, what can I earn? Well, potential earnings varies across the sector. For example, plumbers can earn £37,000 a year and plasterers can earn £30,000 a year. But as I said, the earnings really do vary. Let's hear from Jesse, who after retraining now works in this sector. As we'll find out, Jesse has tried a few careers, but has now followed her passion to become a painter, decorator and carpenter. She certainly hasn't looked back and has gone about breaking a few traditional gender barriers along the way. My mum said my sister always used to fight over uh, the TV remote with me. She wants to watch cartoons and I wanted to watch Ground Force and Changing Rooms. <laughs> My name is Jessie Rani. I'm a painter and decorator and a carpenter. In school I did my GCSEs. I started to do my A-levels. I stayed on for the first year of AS levels, but unfortunately I chose my subjects based on what my friends were doing, not what I wanted to do. And I soon learned that I had to make the right, right decisions. So yeah, I dropped out of AS level and felt really lost then, just thought, you know, what can I do? Because school was so focused on going to university, doing your A-levels, and I just felt like that was my only option. So I went and did a year in college painting and decorating. I then got a job with a family friend as a painter and decorator and went on to open my own painting and decorating business. And everyone seemed to ask me to do odd jobs, like carpentry jobs, and can you fix this? Can you do this as well? And I could have done it, but I didn't feel confident to do it. That's when I made this choice to go back to college and do carpentry for three years. The first year was full time. The second and third year I started my apprenticeship. So I was on site for most of it and then in college for a few days a week. I knew that there was lots of different elements of carpentry that you know you need a lot of time to learn. So I thought the three years in college would be the best idea for me. Absolutely, I definitely followed my dreams and not staying on and doing my A-levels. I always knew that I wanted to do something hands-on. Just being a woman and doing carpentry speaks for itself, I think. I don't need to talk about it. People can see that I'm a woman and that I'm doing it. So why can't they do it if they want to do it too? Um, I've been accepted on every site that I've been on um, as an equal to everyone else. And I found it really fun. I've not expected to lift heavy things. There's some boys that can't lift heavy things, you know? So everyone helps you out and you're there working as a team anyway. So it, you're never on your own. So I'm now in full-time employment and I'm learning so much. I think so many young people are waiting for something to happen or waiting for things to find them, but actually you need to go and find it yourself. Don't be scared to go and ask people. If you've got a family friend doing a career in construction, and you want to do a career in construction, ask them if they'll take you on and give you some work experience, whether it be on the weekends or whether they might want to take on an apprentice and you want to do that, just, just ask them. They can, they can only say no. Oh yes, beautiful, perfect. The health, hospitality and lifestyle sector probably contains the broadest spectrum of jobs, but this is the sector for you if you like People. With the population of Wales living longer, having more diverse health and social care needs and better health care, this area of the sector is really growing. The hospitality industry, especially with the increase in popularity of staycations, is expanding. And areas within a lifestyle such as beauty, hair design, sports therapy are on the rise as more and more like to look and feel their best. So what skills are needed for this sector? Well, you'll no doubt need good people skills with lots of carers being required. And it seems that there just aren't enough chefs. So what can you earn? Well, it really does vary across the sector. For example, dentists can earn above £41,000 a year. Hairdressers around £16,000 a year and community carers on average £16,000 a year. Let's hear from two people who've decided on a career in this sector. 
Gabby has chosen a career in hair and beauty, and Samantha, who after a career in retail, has decided to retrain and follow her passion in childcare. They want you to like transform them and make them look amazing. And I like doing that. I like knowing I can make someone feel really good about themselves through their hair. Hi, I'm Gabby and I'm a hairdresser. I started doing it as a work experience when I turned 16 and I went into my first ever salon and I really like enjoyed it. And then I, when I went into school to do our, our choices, that was a choice I knew that I was taking, it was hairdressing. And I, I took it, I, I did my first level and I really enjoyed it. And I thought, oh, this is, this is for me. I felt like in school, I did stuff I didn't want to do. So like geography, I didn't want to do geography, I didn't want to do RE, but you kind of have to do it. And each morning I was like, oh, I don't want to go to school. But then when I kind of got the choice to do what I wanted to do, I have no problem getting out of bed and going. My ambition, so currently right now, I'm, I'm doing my competitions and I'm also wanting to go to uni to do hairdressing and makeup for fashion. And I really love to do hair makeup in, a, in, a, in London Fashion Week in Milan. I want to be able to, to travel. That's my, my goal is to be a hairdresser that travels around the place and, and somewhere down the line maybe teaches. Don't listen to people saying that having a, having a job that's not a uni graduate is not good enough. Go with what you want to do and even if you upset some people along the way, still choose what you want to do because it's going to make you happy, it's going to make it's easier if you get out of bed in the morning and it's just going to be more fun for you to do you know so just pick what you want to do and don't listen to anybody else my name is sam and my chosen vocation is childcare. so i had worked in retail for 14 years and it wasn't really where i wanted to be ultimately i wanted to work with children and um, so i took a huge leap of faith and enrolled to start college. Um, so I started last year and here I am now. <laughs> you have to have qualifications now to go into childcare. Qualification would be part-time in the college and then you'd be going out to placement two days a week in a school to get hands-on experience there as well. So last year I did a level two in childcare and then this year I'm doing a level three support and learning so I can go on to be a TA or a one-to-one -one in the school. I find childcare extremely rewarding, uh, helping children to learn and grow and know that you've actually had a part in that is just such a great feeling and it really does keep you young. <laughs> the hands-on experience is really invaluable. You learn so much from actually being in the role and learning firsthand, um, but the, the other side of it, the education side, is also really good because it shows you what you should be doing and what you shouldn't and it gives you that confidence then to go and put that into practice. So I was on placement two days a week and I was in college three days. Uh, this year it's a part-time course, so I'm one day in college and then I'm one day in placement. I would like to go and work full time in the school uh, with foundation phase children um, because they're just so wonderful to work with. They're full of life. They see things from a totally different perspective to you. And that is just wonderful to watch. When I was in school, you had one teacher in the classroom. You didn't really have teaching assistants, um, but now every class has a teaching assistant. It's been a long time since I've been in education, um, but it was the best thing that I've ever done. If you want to do something, just go and do it. This year has been phenomenal for me. Um, my confidence has just grown. I've learned so much and it's just brought a lot of happiness to my life. So just follow the career path that you want to choose. So, IT and business. I think we're all more than comfortable using some form of computer or tablet, whether that be for games or schoolwork. But have you thought about what it takes to work in IT and how you can use IT in business? 
The main skills required for the future workforce in this sector right across Wales are in the areas of STEM and digital skills. And again, there will be an even greater need for these skills as in North Wales, the finance and professional services areas are thriving. And in South and Mid Wales, there is real demand for digital and ICT skills. Within the South East Wales Cardiff capital region, there is already a skills shortage and a big need to attract more people into this area. So what type of jobs are available in this area? Well, as you can see, it's a pretty long list. So, how much can you earn? Well, as always, it varies. IT operation technicians can earn £30,000 a year and IT specialist managers can earn £50,000 a year. Let's hear from Kieran and how he's getting ready for a career in IT. I built uh, many of my own computers um, right from scratch. I've always enjoyed sort of tinkering around with the hardware side of it and software, being able to break it, put it back together. Interview Kieran Davis, I do a bit of dealing with the technology of the From the age of six or seven, I started purchasing my own computer components and put them together from scratch uh, to build a working PC. And then I enjoyed taking it apart, working out what each component did and did for the system, and then putting it back together. So my three options in school were IT, digital graphics and business studies. Um, I chose IT because I wanted a career in IT. Digital graphics because I felt as if that was quite a strong point of mine. I was able to sort of design things within Photoshop. And then I took business studies in case in the future that I ever wanted to open my own business. So once I'd finished school, I came to College Cigar to study a level three BTEC extended diploma in IT and computing. I chose the BTEC over the A-levels because I felt as if it was the best way for me to show my true potential within IT. Exams weren't exactly my strong point, so I thought if I took a BTEC, there was more of a chance of me getting higher grades to be able to move on, whether it was an apprenticeship, university or a career. I was able to show my true knowledge within IT, showing my hands-on experience, my software development, my technical skills within that, whereas A-Levels was more just showing the theory side that I remembered how computers work and not actually showing my, from myself how they work. I really enjoy networking and sort of just troubleshooting computers and networks in general because there's never the same answer twice. It's always different issues and you can spend a while trying to find an answer or it can be done in 30 seconds flat. It's all different problems and you get to use your knowledge to be able to fix it. I'm going to go from college to university. I've got a position in Aberystwyth University to study computer science. After I finish my university degree in Aberystwyth, I hope to sort of stay in Wales and find a career in IT in Wales. I feel as if there's a lot of development that can be done within Wales for the IT sector. I feel as if there's not many businesses already working from Wales and there could be an increase. I'm a fluent Welsh speaker and I'm hoping to use that also within businesses. My advice to younger people would be follow your own path, don't listen to what everyone else tells you. If they say just follow the normal route which is A-levels, university career and you don't feel as if that's for you then don't follow it because you need to do what's right for yourself. If you think that you're stronger within a BTEC or an apprenticeship go for that route because that will show your true potential and knowledge more than what A-levels might. Yeah. The creative and digital sector is growing fast and growing all across Wales. Here's a list of the type of jobs that you may traditionally think of in this sector. But what skills do you need? Well, being creative or having digital skills are a good start. But it's really quite varied and will depend on which part of the sector you are employed in. Within the creative areas, you may want to be a presenter. Or you may prefer something a little more behind the scenes. <laughs> As we'll find out shortly, this is an area where you can really use your natural talent. The digital world, well this is huge, extremely varied and continually evolving. So, as always, how much can you earn? 
Well, potential earnings vary, but authors, writers, and translators can earn £32,000 a year, whereas sales-related occupations in the digital areas can earn £22,000 a year. Christian Punter, or Otto, which is his performing name, has used his talent and passion in music and recently signed with a record label. Let's find out how he found the freedom that was offered on the vocational course. Tell me something that I don't know. Give me reasons to find some hope. I know um, that I we call it could like indie Let's folk go. acoustic. It's quite an interesting life to lead, being a, being a sort of artist in the industry where you meet loads of crazy people. My name's Christian Punter. I, uh, I go under an artist alias called Otto. Uh, I'm a songwriter and producer and uh, singer as well. Like music, something that has sort of been happening throughout my life. Uh, like my granddad was really into music, and uh, he kind of pushed me uh, to have guitar lessons when I was really young. But the you know the creative side of of school was. You know, something that I really enjoyed, so sort of arts and crafts, DT, and um, and then obviously music is the sort of main thing that I enjoyed the most. I did my GCSEs in uh, St John's over in Aberdeen, and then I studied music for three years in Colo de Camoy uh, in the Hornapir campus. And then from there, it just was like a kind of natural progression to start writing my own songs, and, and from there, just going into it as a full-time career, I think. It was a big step up from school, uh, so I enjoy I enjoyed sort of having the, I guess, freedom that it kind of that comes with a vocational course. So it was uh, everything was kind of down to me, and I like having that sort of amount of control with sort of work ethic and stuff like that. I didn't go to uni because I thought, um, as a songwriter, I've, I've always thought that like it's the song that'll get you there in the end and everything else is just an added plus. I think if you're going into the creative arts, um, having stuff be quite strict is quite, I mean, for me, it's quite difficult. Um, I like sort of the fluidity of being able to do what I need when I need, in a way. Um, so like BTEX and, and stuff like that, uh, as opposed to A-levels are just, for me, oh, they were a lot sort of kind of easier. And then it's also, you know, with A levels, you can't do just one specific route. Um, you have to take, you know, multiple things. Whereas if your focus is solely one thing, then these sort of vocational courses give you a really good opportunity to fully 110% focus on the one thing that you want to do. Um, so for me, it was kind of a no-brainer. You know, you'll know in your heart where you'd want to, where you want to be, sort of in the future, and what you want to do. I mean, for me, I've been quite lucky. I picked my career path, I guess, quite early on. Um, I mean, it's a dream to be able to sort of create music at a professional level and, and have people listen to it. Um, so that sort of fulfilling that dream is uh, it's been a long time coming, but it's been a, been a good ride so far. Um, like if you were going into a job that requires you to have a certain certificate that you hang on a wall or something like that, then I would say, you know, you'd have to go, like, if you're going to be an architect, you'd have to go through the right, you know, means to do that, or a doctor. Um, but if you're going into the creative arts, it really depends on what sort of person you are. So you've heard a lot about each of the sectors, the types of jobs, as well as the skills required for those jobs, and also an idea of how much you can earn. But remember, being paid to do something you love is often the best choice. As the saying goes, do what you love and you will never work a day in your life. So what next? Well, to help you decide and to find out more information, you can visit some of the websites listed here. And remember to speak to your career advisors in school.